long, long ago, there lived a little princess with raven black hair and skin so white and fair that everybody in the kingdom called her Snow White. While Snow White was still a little girl, a new queen came to the kingdom. A cruel and haughty queen, so proud of her beauty, she would stand in the hall of mirrors and say, Tell me, mirror, I command, am I the fairest in the land? And the great mirror would answer, In all the land there's none so fair as you, O oh queen with golden hair. Years passed, and Snow White grew into a dazzling beauty. Then one day, when the queen asked, You there, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? The mirror answered, There's time for truth and time for tact. But you, O oh queen, must face the fact that Snow White's beauty so sublime surpasses yours a thousand times. Furious, the queen summoned a huntsman. Take Snow White into the wilderness. Lose her. She'll be gobbled up by wild animals, and I'll be rid of her forever. The obedient huntsman led Snow White deep into the forest. And when he was sure she was lost, he returned to the castle. Snow White wandered through the forest. Suddenly, she came upon a little log cabin in a clearing. No one was home, but inside, Snow White counted... Seven little chairs. Seven beds. Seven places at the table. Oh, but this place needs cleaning. Snow White worked hard straightening up the house. And when she was finished, she stretched across two little beds and fell fast asleep. Toward evening, when the sun was setting, some little men came marching down from the mountains where they dug all day for gold in the mine. There were seven of them. One with a dimple, one with a frown. A third like a wizard, a fourth like a clown. A fifth who was naughty, a sixth who was sweet, and an odd one, the seventh, with two left feet. They were the seven dwarves, and Snow White was sound asleep in their home. Into the cottage marched the seven dwarves. Someone had cleaned their house. And someone was passed asleep across two beds. Just then, Snow White woke up and rubbed her eyes, and the first thing she saw was seven little men standing round her. Oh! Quickly, Snow White told her story. So you see, that is why I must hide from the wicked queen. All seven dwarves were so taken with Snow White that they decided she had to stay with them. Oh, thank you. And I'll cook and keep house for you. Meanwhile, back at the palace, the proud queen, thinking she was rid of Snow White, paraded before the mirror. Now then, mirror on the wall, am I not the fairest of them all? But the mirror answered, past six green hills, ten leagues away, the seven dwarves bid Snow White stay to cook and sow and lend a hand and be the fairest in the land. Furious, the queen plotted against Snow White. Disguised as a beggar selling apples, she journeyed across the six hills and finally came to a little cottage where Snow White lived. Please, Snow White, buy an apple from a poor woman. Why, yes. Pick out one for me. My dear, take this big red one. Especially for you. The queen had dipped that apple in a secret potion which made a person fall asleep and sleep forever and ever until a prince came and kissed the spell away. Snow White bit into the apple. Oh. Swooned under the potion spell. And fell fast asleep. Chuckling, the queen hurried back to the palace. In the forest, the seven dwarves watched over the stricken Snow White day and night. One day, a handsome young prince rode into the valley. When he saw the sleeping Snow White, he was so overcome with love that he bent down and kissed her. Oh, I, I'm awake! 
for the kiss broke the spell. Soon thereafter, Snow White married the prince and lived in his castle, but she often returned to visit the seven dwarves. The one with the dimple, the one with the frown, the third like a wizard, the fourth like a clown, the fifth who was naughty, the sixth who was sweet, and most of all, the seventh with two left feet.